listeners, I find it very interesting that in our low carb space where, you know, our numbers, our blood panels may be a little different than what standard American dieters will view as normal. But then we still, we understand that our diet's different, that then, then maybe our blood markers may be different, but we still kind of try to follow like even the thyroid marker, right? So I noticed in the uh, carnivore space, a lot of us have low T3s and it's perfectly normal. Maybe that's the new normal. Um, But in terms of cholesterol, it's the same thing, right? So we understand, I think a lot of people understand in the low carb space, it's normal to have maybe higher LDLs. HDL will also go up. Your triglycerides should maybe be under a hundred. But is there a point that maybe your cholesterol is a little too high, even in the low carb space? And I know, you know, numbers are not necessarily ideal to talk about, but is there a point where LDLP and LDL in general, the um, the in total cholesterol of LDL, is there a point where it's too high, even if your yeah. HDL is high and triglycerides are under a hundred? Yeah, good question. And there, there's a lot of emerge, or there hopefully will soon be a, some emerging evidence to point us in one direction um, okay. or the other, but we don't know for sure. But but one important point to make though is that the science, the, the studies are very clear that the vast majority of people who start a low-carb diet to lose weight or treat their type 2 diabetes, LDL does not go up for the overwhelming majority of those people. And that's one point that I just have to keep making till I'm blue in the face because the, the people who are sort of the doctors who, who are very cautious about low-carb diets or keto diets or who flat out recommend people don't do it, say your LDL is going to go through the roof. You cannot do that diet. And that is just blatantly false because in the vast majority of studies, LDL does not go up. Now, that being said, there is clearly a subpopulation where the LDL does go up. So it can, but it's the minority. And I think that's really important to focus on. So do we have any evidence to say it can go up? It's okay to go up to 250, but if it goes up to 300, then it's too much. No, we don't have any evidence to say that. We don't have any evidence to say it's perfectly safe either. And we don't have any evidence to say in this population, it's really dangerous. So, you know, what do we do? Do we just throw our hands up in the air and say, I give up because we don't have any evidence? No, we have to, you know, do the best we can. And this is where it really does have to be individualized because first and foremost, we have to make sure we're talking about the right situation, the so-called hyper responder situation where the HDL goes up, the triglycerides go down and there aren't really any ongoing markers of severe metabolic dysfunction from you know insulin standpoint, blood sugar standpoint, chronic inflammation standpoint, and then other things like lipoprotein little a, you know, blood pressure, even a calcium score, all these things kind of come into play to evaluate that person to say, could your elevated LDL be contributing to a problem? Or is it possible that it's just a you know a benign response that has nothing to do with adverse health? Um, adverse health consequences. And again, while we might might not have hard data to say for sure, we can use all these other factors to kind of influence us because there are certainly suggestion, suggestive studies out there that, you know, high LDL may not be a problem. In fact, there was one recently looking at calcium scores. People with calcium scores of zero and then followed for over 10 years, how many, you know, uh, how many progressed and how many stayed the same with calcium scores of zero. And there was this subpopulation that they studied with people who had an LDL above 190. It wasn't low carb. It wasn't keto. It wasn't anything like that. But there was a subpopulation who had LDL above 190 milligrams per deciliter, which is considered, you know, automatic high, must treat with a statin, dangerous. You know, that's how cardiology considers it. But over half of them 10 years later still had a calcium score of zero. So that, I mean, that's as clear of evidence as you, I think you can get that there, we can't treat everybody with high LDL the same, that there are different populations who aren't going to progress, who aren't going to develop vascular disease. And how do we find out who these are? I think there's a very good possibility that they are the people who have low triglycerides, high HDL naturally with good metabolic health, low inflammatory markers, normal blood pressure, et cetera, et cetera, that that subgroup of people without familial hypercholesterolemia are going to be just fine. This is suggestive data, not proof data, but um, you know, hopefully that will be coming sometime soon because we have enough reason to, to question it. But this is where you know, things have to be very personalized, unfortunately, because we can't just make general recommendations. Yeah, I had a specific client that her LDL, so she was eating you know, a high fat meat-based diet and her LDL was 800 plus. And so, but all the other markers you mentioned, CAC score, triglycerides, all of the other um, markers 
we're totally fine. And I just had not seen a number that high before. And so she started ending up working with Dave Feldman um, and there, you know, she totally fits the hyper responder. But, you know, when people see that number or the, um, the LDLP marker being in the 3000s, it becomes concerning. And it's just, how do you say, well, maybe for your situation, you're, you are that population, right? That it might be okay. And so, yeah, I think it's where, um, and I get a lot of the messages from the people that their LDL is skyrocketing like that. And so yeah. for that population, and maybe it is a very, very small subset, as you said, but maybe in the meat-based world, because there's less carbohydrates in general, it's almost zero carbs, and that may impact the cholesterol. I'm not sure. sure um, because I think the number one intervention to lower the LDL at least from a lifestyle standpoint, is yeah. to add carbs. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to go back to 200 grams of carbs a day, but if you're at like zero or 20 grams of carbs and you go to 75 grams of carbs, you can see that LDL come down. Yeah. Whether that's necessary or not is a whole different question. But if you're looking for a way to lower it, that is one way. So yeah, so I think you know if you can see going from 50 to 20 to zero grams of carbs, then maybe your likelihood of LDL going up also increases with that. I could see that happening. And yeah, you know, 800 is high. You know, I hear that and I hear my stomach goes, Ugh, you know, and that's part of my, you know, decades of cardiology training that I can't completely get away from. But at right. the same time, I have to acknowledge that I don't know the answer if that's, if that's going to be harmful or not. But I do think that person deserves a very thorough evaluation for other um, potential contributors to vascular health or, you know, vascular disease and an evaluation beyond just labs. Like that's where a calcium score or CIMT or different, different tests can really be used in a thoughtful way to kind of say, let's monitor this person more closely as long as, you know, they, they're getting other benefits from their lifestyle, right? If, it, if they could say, yeah, I could, you know, leave it or take it with this carnivore diet, you know, it, it was okay. Then I'd say, well, why risk it? If you can eat other diets and just feel equally as good, you know, maybe it's worth changing. But it's almost never the case. Most people are like, I feel so much better. And, you know, my, I'm thinking better and I've lost weight and my autoimmune conditions have improved. And, you know, when you see all these benefits, then you're kind of hard pressed to want them to, to change. You want to keep them on that diet that's right. making them feel so good. You just want to make sure it's safe and healthy for the longer term. And that's where more, close, more um, careful monitoring comes into play. Yeah. And I think for her, um, working with Dave Feldman, she, he brought up the, if you want to just kind of manipulate the numbers of the cholesterol test, eat some carbs before, but I think she added in some veggies and it did lower it a little bit, but not enough to be in the, you know, 170 and below range. So it is, um, really fascinating. Um, are there markers that you, uh, would define as these are really good markers to check consistently on a yearly basis for heart health, for cardiovascular risk? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are quite a few, you know, um, I, I really like to see ApoB LDL particle number and um, the small dense LDL. Um, of course, I love HDL and triglycerides. Those are so important and often overlooked. Uh, LP little a is really important to check at least once. Um, I'm a fan of calcium scores and following them over time. Um, there are lots of sort of newer tests, you know, like the um, the ox fossil, fos, uh, the ox PL ApoB, um, you know, there's LPPLA2. I can come up with so many other ones that have a role, but I don't know if they are the most important for everybody to follow. Because I think for most people, you just need to work on getting your trigs down, getting your HDL up naturally, um, reducing your percentage of small dense LDL, making sure your chronic inflammatory markers are low, you know, making sure your blood pressure is normal, making sure your blood sugar and insulin levels are normal. That's like the starting point. And I wouldn't go much deeper than that until those are really ironed out. Because if you're trying to focus on your more specific markers, but you haven't really addressed your basic markers, you're kind of getting a little backwards. And I see that a lot, that people are worried about like their LPPLA2, but their triglycerides are still 200 and their HDL is still 30. I'm like, well, hang on a second. Let's, let's rewind and, and see what we're doing and look at the broader picture rather than focusing in so much on those specific markers. Yeah, uh, no, I can totally agree with that.